this is it right here i wanted to freeze this and show you guys literally here's the glare you can see a little bit of his ghillie suit and then it's just invisible this is the activision we all know and love this is the activision that just broke like billions of dollars in sales and things like that but yeah they can't afford to not do stupid shit weird what is going on wolfpack savage here i hope you're having a good day and i hope that warzone has been treating you well before we get into the video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel join the wolfpack today also leave a like on the video let's destroy the like button and get to 2,000 likes and as always if you guys are looking for players to play with make sure you join our discord community and utilize the looking for groups pages to your advantage to go out there and play with some teammates that actually use microphones but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video all right here we are spectating lone trolls men and usually i use streamer mode to hide their names but i forgot to in this one and we're just gonna go with it um but him and his teammate ghostly are on a wrecking path so far all right here we are approaching the building using the heartbeat of course it's so late game the chance of people having having ghosts on is pretty high All right, so as far as the ping, I mean, we already knew he wasn't in this building. He was leaving this building, but still here we are clearing it. And I'm not against clearing it, but I think I would rather be chasing this man down because you know he's just going to go to the next building and probably camp or he's just going to run away. That's for some reason, that's the unfortunate thing about this game is players don't really seem like they want to play. It seems like they just want to run away from fights just like that guy. And especially if you're playing duos, like if it's quads and by yourself, and you're being pushed, I can understand you running away. But in duos, you should... You guys should get out there and try to practice 1v2 fighting. It's not the most impossible thing in the world. It's very probable that you could successfully do that. Uh, but here we have two people. We don't know if they're enemies, but we do know there are two people separated from each other. So this is a point where you guys need to work as a team and bulldoze through the enemies. Now, again, a lot of your top players, when they're running quads, duos, or trios, they literally go in a fight and go out and on to the next one. That's why a lot of players are dropping 30, 40 kill games is because their momentum of the match is just so fast. And that's one thing you wanna do. You guys, instead of just prolonging the fight and one guy fight one building, one guy fight another, and just kinda of sit there and watch the window and wait for a pick. You got two of you guys, you see a team separated, take advantage of that and absolutely destroy them. Even if he's in the rooftop of this building, which he probably is, you guys can still go in there as a duo and absolutely destroy this man. So that's exactly what I would do. Don't wait for them to like run across the street and reconnect. Remember, take advantage of the separation while you can. Here we are laying prone. Awesome. I don't understand this at all. Guy going across the street, trying to reconnect with his boyfriend. Oh, you hate to see that, man. Oh, all you gotta do is shoot him one more time, but your boy got all the kills. He's still getting all the kills. Look at this. Nice. Right, not in the building. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about what this player did here. Yes, he did kill us. Good on him. But, but I want you guys to notice what happens when a player feels pressure. He was sitting crouched behind a propane tank waiting for us to come around the corner. The better play for you guys is to rotate around the buildings, jump in and out of windows, literally just consistently stay moving. That way enemies can't collapse on you. And even though he downed us, Orange has a huge chance he could wrap around the backside and kill this kid too. Now, as far as the guy was spectating, I really don't mind him trying to find the enemy. It's just unfortunate that the enemy had the drop on us because he was sitting there waiting and it is what it is. Oh, and as far as enemies concerned, again, guys, look. When, when you have an enemy down, especially in duos, because you know there's not more than two people, at least not yet, but especially in duos, when you have one of them down, don't waste the rest of your magazine to get the execution off. It's not worth it. Just make sure you try to outplay the situation and finish off both teammates now, unless they're going for a self-res. Then at that point, yeah, screw them. All right, but here we are spectating Ghostly now, who's rocking eight kills. So uh, he's definitely doing a lot better than Lone as far as kills is concerned. And we need to get our boy back. We need to get him back. I love it too. Removing pings doesn't seem like it's that crucial, but it definitely is, especially in a team-based game. Now we have a bounty over here. You could go pick up. Um, we're really not that far away cash-wise from getting our teammate. And because there's no most wanted bounties and no supply runs nearby, I would go ahead and pick up the bounty and just try to just try to loot these little bitty buildings. Normally, I don't like looting like this, but in this situation, again, because there's no objectives near us that we could actually utilize. I think I would just see if I can find a little bit of cash. I mean, look at us now. We have $3,500 or $500 away from getting them back. Pick up that bounty, even if you don't want to go chase down the bounty and kill them, just on the chance that it does ping somebody, let's say in this compound right here. Now we know, holy shit, screw this area. There's 30 people sitting in this building. Let's go to a different buy station that's safer. Again, just because you grab a bounty doesn't mean you have to fight them. If you guys don't want to fight bounties, but you still want to kind of know where people are at, that's a great tactic to use as well. And I'll say that in every video because I feel like too many people that we spectate don't pick up anything. 
All right, we got a sniper on the hilltop behind us. Weird. <laughs> okay, well, there, there you go. And that's how you just headshot every time, man. Every time. You set that man down real fast. Now, but we got to be careful because we're still vulnerable right here. That hill can actually see us. Um, we got to be very careful in this situation when you go to buy back. Thankfully, again, they weren't paying attention, whether they're popping their plates or pushing us. Who knows? But I would definitely let my teammate know, hey, yo, dude, there's a guy over here. Make sure you're keeping your eyes on him as you're coming back down from the heavens. That way we can find out, are they pushing? Are they repositioning? Where are they going to? Where do I need to go to? And so on and so forth. You always want to base your plans and movement based off enemy's location. That's the Clearly... Their teammate did not do that because there's a guy literally sitting right next to the vehicle, right next to us. Um, again, use it as like a cheat code if you're coming back from the heavens. If your guy feels like he's got a lot of pressure on him or he's already being shot at, which he was, or, you know, he just bought you back. So people are usually going to go towards the buy stations with flares off up in the air. So you want to give them some kind of intel. I don't know what the hell our teammate was doing, but Skyfall just shit right down our throat, unfortunately. I say I don't know what the hell he's doing. Again, these are just simple things that a lot of players don't think about or they've never done before. They've never... That was loud as shit. Wow. All right, but we got the down. Not really sure what we're doing right now. We're separate. What are, what are we doing? Now, there's a chance the enemy has a self-res. There's a huge chance, but there's a chance he doesn't. I, I like the fact you don't want to sit in the window and just sit there hard scoping him. I respect that, but you don't have to back this far away. The, the whole point of this is you still want to be able to get eyes on the enemy because if the enemy does crawl to safety and his teammate gets the res off, you're now back into a 1v2 situation instead of a 1v1 that you could have possibly created. Granted, he could have self-res. We don't know, but why take that risk? So I would definitely try to keep my eyes on him. I wouldn't sit there in the window just hard scoping and peeking my binoculars or anything like that, but, you know, just kind of crouch, step, sidestep, go up to it. Make sure you have visual. I don't know what, what he's doing right now. He's got the right idea, but I, I, there's a there's an enemy on the left hand side, and we're getting shot through. I don't think that window has an angle on us, brothers. I don't. These windows right here that are at the top that we can't see because of the mini map. I don't know exactly what the hell. I don't believe. I may be mistaken. If I am, let me know in the comment section below. But I don't believe that hill that's over here that we were getting sniped from earlier um has an angle on us. I don't believe that at all. So let's see what happens. That's interesting. Again, same thing with orange. Orange needs to be trying to ping some enemies, get some live pings off. You guys don't have to be 100 feet off the ground to ping the enemies. You guys could be high up. There we go. There we go. Ghostly said, Savage. Shut your mouth. I'm about to do it. Now, and this is what I'm talking about. This is crazy. This is a little sus. I'm not going to lie. So the situation right now is, I mean, look at the windows. There's literally nothing but the sky on top of trees. I don't know how anyone's shooting us right now. I don't know who downed us i don't know any, i have no in, intel how the hell did we just go down you can tell we got shot from this way and not the guys over here again because of the hit indicator so i'm a little confused we may have a hacker in this game let's see i mean literally the windows you have no angle don't even tell me savage they do have an angle because no they don't shush someone's definitely walling bro someone definitely shot us to the wall why they're not executing i don't know Now, Ghostly needs to get the res. Unfortunately, there's no sa safe way to res us because we do have possibly a duo sitting right around our building, and then we have Joe Blow Sniper hacking through walls, shooting at us through his building as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the hell downed us. They, they shot us twice. They downed us once. They didn't even try to execute. I'm very, very confused. Maybe that's one of those symphony moments where he randomly shoots at a building and gets a knock. Could be. Could be. All right, we hear the footsteps on the left-hand side. So at this point right now, we're in a situation where we've cornered ourselves into a building. We see this a lot, unfortunately. We really do. Seems like two, three times a, a week, we spectate videos where a team we're spectating does this or the enemy team's doing this. And this is something you don't want to do. You're literally sitting yourself in a coffin right now. Is there a chance you guys could survive this? For sure, but the chance is not that great. I'd say it's probably a 30% chance you're actually going to have a successful fight. Why? Because most players have stun grenades. Most players have thermite. Most players have stickies. And if you get hit by any one of those things, you're going to be extremely vulnerable. Not to mention our area of movement is very minimum right now. We can only vault off of this thing or sidestep. As far as the enemies are concerned, they can run in this building. They can change their position right here. They can change their position under us. They can hit us from two different ways. And while we're focused on one, the other one can shoot up. There's just too many variables that I don't like that are working against us. So guys, this is a huge habit for most players in this game. And I can say that confidently that you guys need to get out of the habit of doing. 
All right, here we go. Enemy pushing right hand side. Now, I want you guys to notice also both enemies are staring the same way. Or both teammates. I'm sorry. We, one of us needs to be watching one way, another one watching the other. Also, the guys that are circling our building are in a fight right now or being shot at by, I'm guessing, the guy who shot at our building. All right, there you go. Skyfall goes down. All right. I guess he did have self res. After all, he was by himself. But even going back to the whole self res and him playing that blue vehicle when he got that down behind the vehicle, even though he had a self res, how the hell did he get from being behind the vehicle to the edge of the wall? And if you don't, guys don't remember what I'm talking about, rewind about a minute and, and shit like that. He should have kept his eyes on that entire situation. That way, if the enemy left the vehicle to get to the wall, we could have shot him when he was out in the open. And this fight could have been won, you know, two minutes ago. All right, but we can't forget the guy that was sniping at us at the hill. We can't forget the guy who downed us. So we can't forget any of that. Somebody's definitely to the southwest up on the hill, and that's exactly what Ghostly's looking at. He knows that there they are, bunny hopping like it's Fortnite. I love it. Guy to the left-hand side, too. I don't think he saw. He may have. He may have saw, saw him and just decided to stick with the guy who's trying to suppress fire. I can respect that, but we need to get to we need to get to Blue right now and try to help him out. Hey, Blue handled his own. Good shit. And now what's going to happen next? Usually when an enemy goes down, their teammate is right up their ass, so I would guess that the clown we just broke their armor on is probably going to jump at us not fully plated because he's trying to get the fight one fast and he's going to die because of the position that the clown's in. I don't really think there's a way he can outplay this situation. Unfortunately for him, his teammate did decide to come try to solo us right now and he got shit on. And now clown boy's in a terrible spot to where he's got to fight two people. And even if he wanted to run from the fight and not try to fight us, he's still got to come our direction to get safe. So there's really not much he can do. Let's see what happens. So many butts. There it is, boys. There it is. Not gonna lie though, I was kind of wrong. I thought that body, I thought he executed homeboy. I thought that was his body's loot right there. Um, not to mention, they kind of timed that great actually. I was I was shitting on the clown man, but the dude popped his self res right when we came around the corner. They, they did the best they could. Now Lone Troll is shooting at something again. We have no pings. Doesn't matter. We had to beat the shit out of him anyway. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, here we have Ghostly again. Hopefully buying a UAV. Again, I'm not a huge believer in self-res. I'm just not. I Nine times out of 10, if you guys are getting knocked and you're playing aggressive, you're gonna get executed because you're literally putting yourself out there. So I'd rather save the money and buy a UAV, but that's just me. All right, we spot two enemy targets sitting here at the buy station. Now we can go in and fight them, but again, the circle's closing in right now. Circle's already closing in. So would you guys rather do one of two things? Would you guys rather sit on the perimeter and wait for them to come out of their hiding spot and then shoot them in the face and kill them? Or do you guys really want to push into a compound where they're probably sitting in buildings and windows and rooftops and doorways and shit like that just so that you guys put yourself in a bad position, then you got to fight them and the gas. The next thing you know, the fight has completely flipped and then you're dead. I definitely wouldn't. So I recommend not pushing in here. I would just wait. All you have to do is wait 15, 20 seconds. They're going to have to leave and jump off the mountain or walk down the street. They don't have a vehicle near them. They can take this one, but guess what? They got to come through us for that. So definitely set yourself up for success instead of just tunnel vision and possibly into your own death. Right now, it's just a waiting game. I definitely don't want them to push in, so I'm not going to say, y'all need to push. Hurry up. Get the fight one. One guy's in the air, actually. There he is. But look, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do this for two reasons. You might get the knock, right? And that's cool. But what if you don't? What if you miss your shot? Then he just flies away. You lose out on a kill, right? He's going to probably land back here, try to get his shit back. Go ahead and wait for him to land while he's getting his stuff. Go ahead and kill him. Two, you're alerting his teammate that you're here. Granted, he probably already sees you. That's fine. But again, I would be in the tree line waiting for this team to come out originally anyway. So uh, let's just see what happens. The only way this is going to be successful and work out for them is if they get the knock. And then it's just a 2v1 fight. So hopefully he does. There's the hit. And the enemy's gone, just like that. And we lost out on that kill, but now homeboy is literally playing the gas. Not much he can do right here. He jumps off the hill. We need to work our way to the edge and gatekeep him. We still keep looking at the hill. He can't come back up that way. Again, that just comes from knowing the layout of the map. Just, just know that he can't come up that way on the hill because there's no path to get up there. There is a way to get up there, but it takes so long. Even if he had a gas mask, he would die to gas before he made it up. 
All right, but there's one going for the self, of course. And again, don't forget about the other teammate that we missed. And unfortunately, we, we allowed him to know that we were there. He may not have been paying attention to us being there. He may have just been so focused on his loot. He couldn't have seen us. Who knows? But we allowed him to survive to fight later on. Hopefully, that doesn't bite us in the ass. I do like how aware Ghostly is, though, man. He, like, he's running and he's scanning. Um, he knows, he's predicting that the enemy landed around here, which we know he did because that's the direction that he fell in through. So I like the fact that he's running straight and he kept peeking to the right-hand side. I definitely recommend, make sure you're peeking on your left hand too. Not as much because we knew he's to our right, but peek both directions. That way you don't get caught by another team trying to rotate in with you guys. Notice how he's scanning, not in a scope. I like it. Definitely a veteran player. Most players, again, especially lower tier, they'll be in their scope trying to trying to scan long range all you got to do is look for movement you don't actually have to see the entire facial expression of the player to be able to shoot them all right so we do have forty one hundred dollars and i think we're about to go buy another uav which i do do highly recommend um but you're probably gonna have a team here you have a helicopter on top of blue roof so i mean hey it is what it is i would almost bet there's a team somewhere around this area probably not on the rooftop still maybe and while he's buying, I definitely would try to, yeah, provide some form of cover should someone peek a window. UAV in the air. There are eight enemies left. Unfortunately, only two pings. So go ahead and ping that up. I like that just as a mental note. Um, but yeah, there's six ghosts running around. Six. And again, I would go ahead and assume that there are two somewhere um, to our left-hand side. Blue assumes that as well. He's holding that angle hard, waiting for the blue building to get pushed out of gas before he rotates. Very smart. Very smart. All right, so they have moved out. Clearly not here anymore. All right, so normally, again, I don't like camping buildings. I hate camping, but sometimes you get these circles that put you in situations where you got to do what you got to do. And unfortunately for this circle, there's not many, there's not much cover around here at all. We do spot one enemy. I like the mark. There's a second one behind him as well. Oh my god, look at this shit, dude. Look at this. It's been a glitch in this game for about a week that I know of, and he's invisible. The only thing you can see is a sniper glint, and then like, part of his hat, or it's not hat, part of his ghillie suit, but he's invisible up until a certain distance. This is it right here. I wanted to freeze this and show you guys. Literally, here's the glare. You can see a little bit of his ghillie suit, and then it's just invisible. This is the Activision we all know and love. This is the Activision that just broke like billions of dollars in sales and things like that but yeah they can't afford to not do stupid shit weird weird but that's enough of me bitching about activision for the day guys i'm sorry keep the positive vibes going all right but right now look even if we down these guys we're not gonna get the execution the chance of them crawling behind street and getting res is high i would go ahead and try to worry about immediate threats which is this homeboy right here go ahead and push up here and shit down his throat Now, he, here's something that I don't like to see. I don't like seeing this. Sh Even if there's a bouncing Betty or a Claymore on the staircase, I would still try to get up there and fight him. Or even if he's sitting there holding an angle, you guys can literally just bulldoze through him. He's going to be able to down one of you guys. And oh, there's, the, there's the Claymore, weird. And then he's going to try to go for the execution because that's what players usually do. So then the second guy could hopefully come in and kill him before he's actually able to execute you. But we want to get this fight won as soon as possible because, again, dude, everyone's going to be sitting here looking on the outskirts of the circle, and guess what's happening? Everyone else is getting safe and getting in the next zone, but we're not. We're going to have to, we're going to have to fight this long ass fight. Next thing you know, we're going to have to run in from the zone, and we're going to be being shot at by the guys we were already picking a fight with earlier, with the, had the invisible glitch, as well as a big Bertha driving around. Oh, he tried to do it, and it didn't take. Damn, that sucks. All right, at this point, don't even go up there. Just wait for them to come out the building to shoot him in the face. But don't don't focus up on the on the snipers. Focus up on this guy. Damn it, dude. There's two of them. Shut your mouth. Oh no. Oh, not like this, brother. You just can't make shit like this up. Oh my god. So when we were sitting there waiting for the guys to come out of the building, we both should have been together focus up on the building. Unfortunately, Ghostly was looking downrange. Granted, I know he wanted to stay safe because he knows there's two snipers over there. But again, 
the immediate threat's the most important threat. I would have been there with my teammate, and then hopefully in this position, we'd be in a 2v4 right now. All right, but look, y'all know how I feel about Big Bertha's. <laughs> it is what it is, man. This shit sucks that people really don't play solos as much anymore and it, it, it's trickling into duos and trios as well quads isn't that bad because four people shooting at a bird can destroy it really quick um man i really wouldn't have shot at those guys granted i don't think there's anything you're gonna be able to do you're gonna have to fight the guy in the bertha i would have been focused on getting position i would have been focused on getting to circle while these guys are distracted looking at bertha use that opportunity to stealth your way up to safety and then figure out what we're gonna do from there this point here and we've now pissed off the two guys that are left up here on the hill and then of course the big bertha will probably find us as well hey there you go there's a knock but we need to push in let's go boys oh shit sniper glare from invisible man weird oh shit where'd he go so weird as shit i saw lost visual on him who knew who f knew there it is big bertha's got the last kill here he is coming for our nuts he jumps out the vehicle but because people that drive vehicles around the end game do what they do, they don't know how to actually shoot their weapon. So he jumps out of the vehicle to try to challenge them. And fortunately, Ghostly is there to deliver the dead blow. I love this. This may be the first time we spectated a squad from beginning to end of the game without switching teams. I absolutely love this. All right, but GG, Ghostly Lone Trolls, if y'all are watching, good shit. All right, but here we are spectating a lair and I do have streamer mode on for this match. So if I forget to turn on streamer mode, it's like that for the whole match, and there's nothing I can do about that. So, unfortunately. If you guys didn't know, don't do that. That's awkward. That's awkward. All right, but here we are now. We still need to get a guy back. We do have enough for a buy, and I think that's exactly where Blue's going, and hopefully we're going to go pick up this flag objective. We really haven't spectated. I don't think we've ever spectated a random squad that's done flags. I don't think we've ever spectated a random squad that's even picked up a flag, to be honest. I'm going to make a video here real soon based solely off of flag objectives and how important recons are. Yeah, that LMG, man. Look, I, I'm not a huge fan of LMGs. And these ground loot LMGs are terrible. What the hell? I'm going to go off the limb and say this is not a diamond lobby. Um, So, Alaire had the right plan. Unfortunately, I mean, I wouldn't have done what he did. He had a, an all right plan. But unfortunately, his teammate, uh, Herrera didn't ping the fact that the enemy had pushed in. So by the time we heard our dude in the fight, we were still tunnel visioned up here, which is where the enemy was originally. Remember guys, ping the enemies. If they change their position, we need to know because you have no idea what your teammates are doing. Your teammates may be coming up from a different flank and that's exactly what Alaire was doing. He was trying to change his position and come up from behind the enemy. But again, because Herrera failed to ping the enemy, we had no idea and our reaction time was delayed because of that. Lack of communication will kill a game instantly, instantly. But uh, fortunately for us, home... Oh, no. Oh, God. I don't think there's anyone else here. We got shot from the top of Dam as we were rotating back to our teammate's dead body. But I don't think there's anybody close because that guy was instant. Very interesting build on the uh, M4. Not gonna lie, I probably should have said don't run out in the open since we know the sniper's above us at dam. I didn't even think about that, but it's not like you can hear me anyway, so it is what it is. It is what it is. Jeez. And that just comes from remembering everything that's happening. I mean, he knew there was a guy up here. He knew there was an enemy up here. There's actually three Carnity 8s up here. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love that snipers are becoming a thing that again though. I really do. Granted, a lot of people are posted up and campy, but dude, oh, most of them can hit their shots. It's so nice to get some headshots on these guys. I love it. I love it. All right, UAV in the air. We've got two pings. Remember, if you use a UAV, I would hope that you're going to push. I don't really feel confident this team's going to push shit. These guys don't look like they want to go anywhere. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So at this point right here, this is a perfect example of using UAVs defensively. This is stupid. Waste of money. Not going to help you. I'd rather use a bounty that's free 
as some kind of like defensive measure to where we know where one enemy's at and we can avoid him if we're playing like that don't recommend it but if you decide to play like that do that then waste four thousand dollars on a uav to sit and hide more save your money shit at that point you might you might as well just quit the game i'm so mad oh here we go here's a guy right here and we pinged him and that was it all right sick sick now we're pushing over here i don't know why he's just gonna jump off the off the dam and, and fly down so we could sit here and wait for him to do that and shoot him but again it's not a diamond lobby so here we are interesting so problem okay so let's just say these guys started let's here let's let me rewind this real quick so i had to rewind this to show you guys how dumb this is so right at this point Cornier is literally mid jump, mid jumping off the dam. Now, why is this the dumbest shit we've seen in this video? Well, it's the dumbest shit in this video because the circle literally collapses in four seconds. So what if for some odd reason, the chance of it happening is slim, but what if the next circle favors dam? It's still in and this is a spot to be. Probably not, but what if? We don't know. What if we dive off and go down here and then the circle favors the upper ground, which, which is literally right in front of us. We, all we have to do is take four steps forward and we're there. What if? There's too many what if factors. Granted, we already saw what the circle ended up happening and what it went to. They got lucky, but still, I'd rather be on the high ground. I don't know, I don't know why they would do this. Not to mention they're parachuting. Their shoots are pulled right now. Easy headshots, easy snipes for a decent Chronic 8 player or a decent sniper in general. And again, this is probably where I would want to be at. I don't know if they're going to make this jump, but why not just go this way? Why not clear out these houses, make sure that's safe? Why would you just bail off and try to make it here? And even if they made it here again, clearing out these compounds would be crucial because you could do it together. But now if these guys do make it right here, which I don't think they will, but if they do make it right here, they're possibly going to have to get to fight with these guys and then maybe even get third party from people hiding in these houses. There are 10 enemies up in this small ass circle. It wouldn't surprise me if you had a couple of attic dwellers sitting in houses waiting for us to run by. Um, but again, I don't think they're going to make this jump anyway. Uh, I stand corrected. I'm not gonna lie, I've never done this before. Uh, again, I would just walk five feet around the bridge, but it is what it is. And again, whenever you pull your parachutes and you're floating for that long, somebody has a chance of seeing you. I'm very surprised no one saw you and shot at you. All right, we have a loadout drop next to us. I'm gonna go off a limb and say they have their ghost class, I think. I don't know. This right here. Stop. All of you guys that sit in windows like this, look at me right now. Stop it. Don't do this shit. You know, when you're sitting like this, everyone can see you. Look at this. They can see you and they can shoot you from different angles and things like that. So what's the best way to prevent yourself from getting headshot? Step back a few feet. Boom. Boom. And then, yes, your field of view gets narrowed, but so does your ability to get headshot by anybody on this ridge line. That's way too much. Way too much for me to want to cover by myself. If I'm sitting back from the window, I can look one direction and I can sidestep and scan the hills. Remember, if you're face checking windows, you're gonna get that face blown off. Step back. If you guys haven't seen the movie Enemy at the Gates, after my video, go rent it. Great movie about snipers. It is fantastic. It's actually the premise off of one of the Call of Duty games. Their story modes was based off of that as well. I'm telling you, great movie. Hopefully it'll enlighten you guys on what a sniper needs to do in order to not get himself shot in the head. Okay, we see two enemies coming up the hill. So another thing, and this is again, something you have to train yourself to do. I'm guilty of this as well. I, for, for decades, bro, in shooters, I always went for center mass. But for the past few years, I've been practicing headshots. Headshots is crucial. That's where you wanna shoot people, especially if you have a sniper rifle. A lot of people tell me, and I prefer the AX-50 as a sniper. I think it's the best sniper in the game. A lot of people are like, Savage, the AX-50's damage sucks, and this and that, HDR is better, this and that. But look, if you hit your headshots, doesn't matter what the damage is, it's gonna down the enemy. Uh, and the reason why I like the AX-50 is, is because of its fast ADS speed compared to the HDR, where it feels like you're pulling out a semi. Um, but regardless, go for your headshots, stop shooting bodies, stop shooting legs, and try to get a little bit more confidence. Now, I didn't mind the amount of time it took from the shoot the bullet, but if you're gonna take that long to shoot, make sure you at least line up the beautiful crosshair with the enemy's beautiful head. Now we can't judge the shots too much because y'all know spectate mode doesn't really show 100%. Oh, weird, but savage, but savage. Weird, man. I mean, look, I was just saying, guys, don't sit in the window. What's gonna happen? You're gonna get tapped in the head. 
we're literally shooting at one enemy. We should have been stepped back to where we could see that one enemy and then his friends around him possibly couldn't have seen us. All right, but here we are getting res. It's now a 2v3 and that team needs to get positioned. Um, if I was that team, I'd be pushing right now. And another thing, and I, Savage, you're pausing the video a lot. I know, look, another thing. When you guys are plating up, it doesn't mean you have to hide. If I was this guy, I'd still be peeking that window. I'm like, let me see if these guys are pushing because if they're on the open and I have one plate popped, I'm going to stop plating and shoot the guy in the head. I don't want to allow that team to down two of us, force us to replate up and push across 200 feet to get to our safety net, right? You don't want that to happen. Not to mention that you always want to keep your eyes on the enemy. That way, if they do go somewhere else, you guys can see it. Don't sit there and stand in the window and stare at them. And be like, hey guys, I'm watching you. Just quick peeks, man. Just quick peeks. That's what it's all about. Let's see what happens. Here we are. We don't peek until we get our sniper back in our hand. Lo and behold, there's... Weird. Here they are pushing up on us. Absolutely the weirdest shit ever. Who would have guessed this? This is just a common sense play. Now look. <laughs> there are three bozos. I'm gonna call them the three stooges. They're sitting here waiting for their death again. What do players carry a lot of? I said it earlier in the video. Stuns, thermite, C4, stickies, shit like that. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna go ahead and guess one of the three options. First, they get stunned, they rush up here and kill us all. Second, they get stunned, they come up here and molly us or simtech us or whatever, us all. Or third, they don't even use stuns, they just all three come up here and when their head gets right here, they'll have a great little head glitch, this being the head glitch, and they'll be able to shoot us. And all we're gonna see is a little bit of their head but what they're gonna see, the enemies who are coming up the stairs, they're gonna see an entire torso and face as well. So again, you do not wanna be in this position. This is not the play. What should this team be doing? Team needs to be jumping out of windows and doing other shit. Become a Spider-Man, man. Start parkouring your ass around the map. Why do you think the game put all these windows in the building? Well, they may not have done that on purpose. I'm gonna be honest, Activision's not that smart, but probably, maybe, on the chance to give you the ability to jump out of a window should a team push you and your guys are in a bad position. This is a shitty position. And this is something that I see a lot of you guys doing, especially newer players, that you guys really need to get out of the habit of. So here we are spectating Fletcher. Okay, there's another enemy here. As far as the situation we're in right now, Blue knew that there's an enemy in this building. There is no ping on this building, unfortunately. The reason why I know that Fletcher knows there's a guy in this building is because of how he's playing. So this is a bad play on his part. He definitely should have pinged it. I don't know. They could be using comms. If they're using comms, that's fine too. We don't know. They seem to be doing fairly well. They pushed on that team really aggressive. They played it well. He's sitting on 18. Sitting on 13 kills. Our circle's coming in. All we got to do is wait for the enemy to run right. He's got to run. There he is right there. Oh my God. You're baldy. Man, dude, I'm telling you one thing right now, dude. If I was this player, I would not try to challenge a car 98 player with a Mac 10. No way. Most most car 98 players I run into are really good car 98 players. You don't want to challenge a car 98 with a Mac 10 at medium range. All right, but let's look at the circle. Now we're actually in a pretty decent position, man. There's only three enemy teams left. Three players. Let's do the math. It's the three v one v one v one, and we have a very nice spot in the circle. It's favoring the building. There's a loadout drop, so all we gotta do is pick them off one at a time. That's it, that's all we gotta do, boo-boo. All right, oh God, Green went down for another player. He did mark, thank you God for the pings. I love to see that shit, but we know he's by himself. We know he's a solo. Let's see how the two guys up there play it. If I were those two guys, I'd get down here, first off. You don't wanna risk going down and getting executed up there, no way. And as far as Fletcher, he needs to be playing his right-hand side. Again, there's two other enemies we can't account for. They could be sitting under us, they could be sitting next to us. Could be sitting in these buildings. That's a 3v1v1 situation. We're looking for the last two guys, clearly solos. Now, Fletcher keeps looking up here. I wouldn't. So the reason why I wouldn't look up here is because we just killed a guy or our teammates just killed a guy that was right up here. If there was another enemy, he would have been involved in that fight too. So just probably no one up there. I'd be keeping my eye on the buildings behind us, the trailers and shit, um, or even the, you know, the big building that we're sitting on top of. He could be playing the wall. And I'd also be watching the loadout drop or the rocks over there. All right, green shooting at somebody at that building. Awesome. Where the hell is this last guy at, dude? The rocks are pushed up. Ladies and gentlemen, what not to do in a, any video game ever, unless they come out with a video game literally made to where you win if you lay prone the longest. 
Don't ever do this shit. If this man would have been standing up looking around, he could have 1v1 Fletcher and picked us off easily because we were so distracted by other shit. We never even looked this direction, period. We could have been an easy kill. And then at that point, your boy, again, if he's peeking and paying attention to audio, he would know that our teammates are up top. He'd know that one of them is. And then again, they would have to come to us. We could have, we could be in an okay situation. But this right here, you're just dooming yourself to die. If you get to an in-game situation and you're in a 1v2, 1v3, 1v4, and you just hide and you don't attempt to make a pick, you're just giving the enemy team more time to find you and come at you from all fronts. If you're trying to outplay the situation, keep your eyes on everything, you're gonna be able to get one pick, two pick, three pick, four, and Dr. Suso, sons of bitches. But nonetheless, GG. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. A lot of lessons to be learned. Again, these are common mistakes that I see a lot of players make. This isn't just like a small portion of the player base. Again, I do believe that 60% of the COD community make basic mistakes on a daily basis. And it's not just because y'all aren't good enough, it's just because y'all aren't aware or it's just bad habits y'all need to break out of. But again, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, destroy the like button, get the 2000 likes, share this video with your friends and teammates. That way, when you do play with them, they're not making these dumbass mistakes like homeboy was laying prone. And until next time, you have a good one. Good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these two bangers right here. And as always, subscribe by clicking that icon. But until next time, you have a good one and keep on improving.